For this exercise, determine what the program does when it runs. Go ahead and take a few minutes, pause the video, and I'll wait a few seconds to give you a chance to pause it and work on it before we continue on. Okay, as you might have figured out, there is something wrong with this code. So let's figure out what happens by drawing a memory diagram. The first thing that happens when the program starts running is that main gets called, and so we get an activation record for main. Within that, we have space for our local variables and parameters. In this particular case, we have two local variables, a and ptr. So let's assume that a gets placed at address 1000, and that ptr gets placed at address 1004. Now when the body of main executes, the first thing that happens is the initialization of A. So A gets initialized to 3. On the next line, we have an initialization of PTR, but it gets initialized to the result of calling a function. So that function call has to happen first. Now our process for calling a function is to evaluate the arguments first. So that argument A gets evaluated to its value 3. Then we get an activation record for that function call. And in most implementations, we have a st stack structure to store activation records. So that activation record gets placed at the top of the stack. And within the activation record for get address, we have the space for our parameter x. So let's assume that it gets placed at address 1000c. Then the next step is to initialize that parameter using the argument value. So that argument value was 3, so therefore x gets initialized to the value 3. Then we run the code within the body of our function. And so that what that is going to do is it's going to return the address of x. Well, that address is 1000c. So that's the value that gets returned. So that value is actually what replaces the function call itself. So that's going to be the result of the call to get address. Then the activation record for get address, it gets reclaimed because that memory is no longer needed. And then we continue where we left off in main. And where we left off was initializing PTR. And we ha now have the value 1000C within PTR. We move on to the next line, and we have a call to the function print an int. And so, again, what happens is the first thing is that the argument gets evaluated. Here it's just a literal, so it just evaluates to the value 42. Then we get an activation record for print an int. And again, in most implementations, we have a stack based data structure. So that gets placed on the top of the stack. And that's actually the same location where the activation for a git address used to be. So that means that our parameter and int, its memory location, most likely will also ha happen to be the same memory location as where the parameter x was in the call to git address. Okay, then the next step is to initialize the parameter using the argument value. The argument value is 42, so that gets placed inside of the memory location for an int. Now we get the code inside of the function gets executed. So that's a C out that will print out the value of an int, which happens to be 42. And then the function returns, and there's no return value. When that function returns, its activation record also gets reclaimed. And then we move on where we left off in main. And so what we have there is another C out. And what that's going to do is it's going to dereference PTR in order to obtain the value located at that memory address. Now PTR, it holds the address 1000C. And it just so happens that at this moment, there isn't a valid object located at that address. So technically, the result is undefined. In most implementations, however, when those activation records got reclaimed, the memory inside of those activation records didn't get cleared out. The old values are still there. And so the most recent value that was located at memory address 1000C is actually that 42 that got placed there when we called print an int. 
So in most implementations, what we would see is that the value 42 would get printed out. But again, according to the C++ standard, the result is undefined, which means that we could get 42, we could get something else, and we can't reliably assume that something is going to, that a particular value is going to get printed out.